2010 has been a pretty a pretty amazing year for Canadian activism and um, I think particularly here in Vancouver with the Olympics. Um, but that momentum certainly carried through to the G20 protests in Toronto. I was there, um, Harsha was there uh, and I, I sort of feel, I, I don't know if this is true or not, I'd be interested to hear what, what Harsha thinks, but I feel like this, this is the year that the people grew their spines back <laughs> in Canadian activism because for a lot, you know, I, I think back to 2001 and these, the, the big convergence around Quebec City, there was a lot of direct action, a lot of coalition building um, and then people really got spooked after September 11th and all the coalitions fell apart and we really didn't have these big convergences, uh, there was just a lot of fear in the air and I think through the steady work of grassroots organizations like No One Is Illegal that's been building back up and this year it just kind of exploded and to me what's been most amazing is not just that you had like one big demonstration but that people kept going back and back and back in the streets and defending themselves defending themselves against the police and not being intimidated by intimidation tactics so I feel really good about the state of Canadian uh, mobilization right now. Arsha, you are quite active during the Olympics uh, it's almost a warm-up for the whole G20 thing talk a bit about how you know, the lead up to the Olympics and G20 and your experience? I think the two critical pieces around the G20 and the Olympics are the fact that they really center critical grassroots issues. So I think part of it, as Naomi was saying, that, you know, kind of post-Quebec City, there was some fear that was um, as a result of 9-11. But I think part of it was also a lot of reflection in the activist community around how movements need to orient themselves. And that if we are going to have massive convergences, that they need to be something that builds strength in local communities. So what was unprecedented in Vancouver, for example, was that there was a strong focus on Indigenous sovereignty and on land issues and how the Olympic industry is but one part of a daily kind of theft of land um, and gentrification that happens in Vancouver and that this is one moment that escalates this daily reality. And we saw the same thing around the G20, right? So we're talking about the G20 and austerity measures in a global context, but it brought together grassroots movements in Toronto. So anti-poverty groups like OCAP, queer rights organizations, disability rights organizations, um, migrant justice organizations, sovereigntists, indigenous sovereigntists. And so I think part of the strength that came in 2010 in both the Olympics and the G20 was the fact that movements had those several years to really strengthen their local organizing and to build massive, massive grassroots bases that didn't just rely on, you know, kind of traditional anti-war labor organizing, which are important, but that also tie them into communities that are the most impacted in their day-to-day -day lives. Particularly in the context of the G20 and the Olympics, when we, you know, we're talking about, especially around the G20, police violence and militarization and police brutality and mass arrests and unprecedented arrests that happen in the streets of Toronto, we're able to tie that into the daily experience of, of police violence and the increasing militarization that we're seeing. You know, so we're seeing schools and street corners get beefed up with cops that are on the beat. The downtown east side of Vancouver in our city has 60 beat cops in a four block radius, right? So this is a daily reality for people. So it's really important to tie in these, these moments of mass protest into daily struggle and daily organizing and to come out of these, these moments stronger. Um, and so in Vancouver, for example, I feel like we've come out much stronger in support of indigenous sovereignty struggles and people have a much deeper understanding of what it means to defend the land on a daily basis.